welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, brought to us by Capcom. With Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, it's not only one of my all-time favorite games, one of my all-time favorite cartoons, but it also happens to be one of the best simultaneous co-op games available for the NES. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers is just another shining example of the collaboration between Disney and Capcom. And when it comes to the Disney Capcom games, usually it's Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers or DuckTales that reaches the top of the list. So here we go with Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers on the NES. You start off by either picking one or two players, and then you can pick either Chip or Dale. I'm going to be playing as Chip since he was my favorite of the two. We start off with a brief story to get us into the game. One of the first things you'll probably notice is that while the levels are quite big, you're actually really small, so it gives you an interesting perspective. Of course, both Chip and Dale are actually very small, so it works really well and Capcom did a good job at making you feel like you're this small character in these very oversized areas. The key component of the game is lifting up and throwing many of the boxes that are laid around each of the levels. You can also duck while holding a box in order to go inside and hiding there, and if anything hits it, you'll actually defeat the enemy. Inside the first large box we find in the game is our good friend Zipper. When you have Zipper around you, you're completely invulnerable from enemy attack, so you can just run right through him. One cool thing is in the co-op mode, if you grab Zipper, you can actually lift up your partner and just run with him over your head so that you both have the invulnerability for a period of time, and you can just easily rush through the different areas. The worst part about this area is be very careful of the electricity running along the wires. One interesting thing as you saw right there is that some enemies when they jump off screen on the top portion, they will disappear off screen, they won't be able to land again, so you can use that as an advantage to get past certain enemies. When you get inside the inner area, you're going to have to build up a couple of blocks in order to get to the higher part. It may take you a try or two to get down the physics of moving the different blocks in the game. Once you grab this box, Monterey Jack appears, runs, and causes a hole in the fence in order to get to the first boss battle of the game. All the boss battles of the game have the same mechanics, picking up this red ball and launching into the weak spot of the enemy. For this first boss, it's very easy to launch it up and then avoid the two lightning streaks that come out of both the left and right side. After you defeat the boss and after every level, you have a little bonus area where you can lift up random boxes in order to find random items, including flowers and stars. After you collect 50 flowers, you'll get an extra life, and you'll get an extra life after you collect 10 stars. While we were taking care of that, Fat Cat, the evil boss of Rescue Rangers, showed up and kidnapped Gadget. So now we have to go to Fat Cat's casino in order to save Gadget. On the main map, you can actually select what levels you want to do, you don't actually have to complete every level. For the sake of this run, though, I will be completing each and every one of the lettered levels. The only real difference is you actually will see the same cutscene twice, because since you don't have to complete every level and they don't expect you to, you will see certain cutscenes a couple of times. In this level, do your best to try to avoid the flying ninjas that are coming in from the left and right side as you work your way up the tree. For the second boss of the game, it's this owl that moves on the left and right on the top of the screen, dropping down many little feathers. Avoid the feathers, which are rather easy to dodge, and keep launching the red ball up at him. After a few seconds, though, he will drop down, and you'll be able to throw the ball to the left, and when it comes back at you, anytime you throw a ball left or right, you can actually grab it as it bounces off the wall. You can use this to your advantage to do a lot of quick damage to some of the bosses later on in the game.
So after completing Zone A, I'll now head back up the map and head to Zone B, inside this large restaurant. We start off with a lot more of the mechanical mice that we first saw in the first level. Do your best to jump over most of them as you're making your way through and grab boxes as you need to in order to defeat them. In the second area of the stage, we have these bears that throw a spread shot of balls at you. Either go under them if they're way above you, or quickly do a backup in order to avoid them as well. When you get to here with the different amounts of faucets, jump on the faucet a few times in order to shut off the water. In the next area, we have different amounts of pots boiling on the stove. Try to do your best to jump on the buttons of the stove in order to avoid any damage of falling inside. In that large box contained an acorn, and will refill your health full if I had taken any damage. The power-up with the letter P on it allows you to pick up different blocks that you couldn't pick up before, such as there's large apples there. These doppelgangers for the most part are pretty easy to avoid, and you can jump right over them to reach to the next area. Our next boss is the ship that moves left and right on the top part of the screen and drops aliens down at us. Try to do your best to throw out the ball at random times when he's coming out at you, and then avoid the aliens as they scurry about the bottom. Level C is a big house filled with books. Now you start off by fighting kangaroo enemies that shoot little tennis balls at you. Best thing to do is try to avoid them as much as possible by going around a certain pattern around the level. However, there is one, this one, that you're going to have to deal with. Best strategy is to wait for the opening after he throws a certain amount of tennis balls, and then quickly jump up and jump over him to get away from him. The next one just launch two of the boxes at him to defeat him. Wait for an opening after he throws a certain amount of tennis balls to drop down, and pick up the two boxes needed in order to defeat the enemy so that you can get into the next area of the level. In this area, do your best to avoid the bombs that are being dropped from the birds. However, make sure to grab the big box in order to get Zipper to appear, so that we can run through a certain area without taking any damage. After you get to the end, you've completed the level as there's no boss in this stage. Zone D takes place in a giant toy store. Our first enemies that we deal with are these doppelganger boxes that spring up and down when you get close to them. You can tell which ones are going to do it due to their different color than the normal boxes. Once we get past a group of them, we then have to deal with these jack-in-the-boxes. On the top level, you're going to have to destroy them in order to get past. With these enemies, you throw a box at them to keep them spinning so that you can sneak underneath of them to get by them. In this area, we have rabbits that grab pieces of the rug in order to try to knock you off of it. Try to do your best to avoid them, as I like to hang around the top area because there's only one bunny to deal with. For these switches, you're going to have to hit them with a box in order to switch them into the off position. With this one, drop down on it and then throw a box on it to go back into off mode so you can get past it. With the jack in the boxes, you have to wait a few seconds and then you eventually will be able to get over them in case you don't have a box with you at the time. <laughs> 